Hello and welcome to this first game of the 2013 year for the Kiowa County Mavericks. Uh, they're hosting the visiting Mineola Wildcats. My name is Matt Christensen. I'll be doing play-by-play -play tonight. I'm joined by Travis Barnes. I'm Travis Barnes. I'll Thank be you. doing color. Uh, we'll join you here in just a second, let you know what to watch for in this game. But first, let's meet our 2013 Kiowa County Mavericks. And welcome back to what should be a very good game between two very good teams in Kiowa County and Mineola. Kiowa County's record sits at five and two. Mineola sits at five and one. Uh, now these are this is a league game. Both Kiowa County and Mineola are in the SPIAA league. Kiowa County has only one league game so far. They're one and zero against uh, with a victory against South Central. Travis, why don't you tell us about how Mineola's done in league play? Uh, Mineola is three and one. Uh, they're one loss coming to a very good Flowler team. Um, Kiowa County, we, we, we don't get the pleasure of seeing them here, but it uh, should be a really, really good game tonight, Matt. Yeah, two very strong teams. Uh, and also, let's talk about some of the key players tonight. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Mineola key players? Uh, yeah, the, the main key players are, you're going to be looking at uh, Matt McLaren. He is a 6'1 senior, um, leads the Wildcats at 14.4 points a game, also leads the way with 4.2 assists per game. Uh, another couple key players, uh, you've got Brandy Shoemate, a 6'2 senior, 12.2 uh, points per game, and he leads the team with eight rebounds. So really, uh, they've got some really, really strong players on the, on the team that the Mavericks are going to have a tough time with tonight, Matt. And just like the Wildcats are led by three strong seniors, the, Wild, the Mavericks also have three strong seniors in Damian Odell, Rustin Artery, and Caleb Davis. Uh, Davis leads, leads the team uh, just over 15 points a game. Uh, Odell and Artery are both right behind him at around 11 points a game. Uh, so again, three, three strong seniors leading both teams tonight. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, uh, and then we'll rejoin you for the national anthem and or starting lineups. Starting lineups for the boys game. Thank you for helping us support Kiowa County Athletics. Go Mavericks! Here at Home Lumber at 715 East Kansas, we support Kiowa County Athletics. Go Mavericks! Centera Bank is a full-service community bank located on Main Street in Greensburg, proudly supporting Kiowa County Schools. Go Mavericks! First Baptist Church of Greensburg, advancing the Kingdom of God. Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's go over the starting lineups here real quick. Uh, first for the Mineola Wildcats. 
Uh, the mini, uh, the five starters for the mini Ola Wildcats tonight are going to be number 11, Matt McLaren, who we already talked about, um, Eric Esplin, uh, Joey Harrington, he's number three, Brandy Shoemate, number four, and Gary Stewart, number 14. And for the Mavericks starting tonight, uh, again, very senior-heavy team for the Mavericks. Uh, we have number four, Caleb Davis, again, mentioned previously, leading the team in scoring at 15.3 points per game. Uh, two big guys, Damian Odell, 6'3", senior. Rustin Artery, a 6'5", senior. Uh, also, Kendall Watson, 5'10", senior. And the only non-senior player for the, uh, the Mavericks starting tonight is number five, David Perez, starting at point guard. So, Matt, just going over the... Uh, the program here tonight and the roster for the Minnehaha Wildcats, they do have a decided height advantage. One thing I've noticed, you know, standing out here on the court, is that they, they, the Mavericks are going to have a tough time keeping up with the uh, Minneola's height. It would be interesting to see how well they do on the boards. Yeah, again, uh, Minneola, a very athletic team, most definitely. Uh, again, very dangerous, having a good season so far. Again, only lost to a very strong Fowler team. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, uh, Minneola has been doing most of their damage this year. Uh, from the inside. They're shooting only 21% from uh, beyond the three-point arc and only 45% from the line. So we'll see if that affects the Mavericks' defensive strategy uh, and see if they can't force some more outside shots and maybe even force the, uh, the Wildcats to, to take a few free throws here tonight. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We're just moments away from tip-off. And Arter able to win that tip off, gets back to Odell who tosses to Perez and we are underway. Nice pass underneath to Odell and Mavericks off to a quick 2-0 lead. Yeah, they really caught the Minneola Wildcats in their, their motion offense. It looks like Minneola came out on man to man and they just passed the ball a couple more times and they could keep up. That almost looked like a secondary break play with the pick up top uh, and the, the player from top of the key coming on underneath with an alley-oop. And, uh, let's, sorry about that. Uh, that's two points for the Wildcats. Randy Shoemate, uh, four. And that was Shoemate for the, uh, the points there. Looks like Mineola's uh, switched to a zone. No, they're still men. Actually, apologize, that was not Shoemate uh, on the basket there as the travels called on the, the Mavericks. Uh, that was er actually Eric Esplund, number 44. Uh, you missed a four there, Travis, which is better than I did. I didn't even catch the first one. So. Uh, I only saw half the jersey. There we go. Mavericks in a man-to-man -man defense. Esplund at the top of the key. Steal by Davis. And he's going to pull it up and set up the Kiowa County offense. And Odell down low doesn't able to get the shot to fall. Stewart with the drive doesn't uh, go all the way, however. McLaren underneath kicks it back out to Stewart. Not able to get it in. Mineola rebound. It's going to be a foul called on Perez there with a push. And we'll see if they say that uh, Shoemate was shooting there. And no, it looks like that was a pass, so be underneath the basket, no shots. Pass over the top to Shoemate, not able to tip it in. Ball tipped around. Finally, Caleb Davis comes down with the rebound, pushes it the other way. Yeah, the Mavericks got really lucky on that play there, Matt. Uh, Rustin Artery got, got out of position on the rebound and luckily bounced to Caleb. An aggressive man-to-man -man D from the Wildcats. Artery takes a shot but not able to get it down. Looks like Stewart got a little bit of that ball as Artery is going up. Oh, and we're going to have a quick
push foul. That's going to be on Rustin Artery. So second team foul on the Mavericks. That was a very good job of selling that foul by. Yeah, called call the push, uh, trying to get through the pick, but called the foul. And it was effective. Yeah, Odell with the rebound off of McLaren shot. Ball into Artery, kicks it back out to Watson. Watson for a shot from the baseline, no good. Very up type of game. Uh, Maniola definitely moves the ball down the court quickly. And that is a three from Shoemate, and Maniola leads 5 2. Perez drives in, kicks it back to Artery. Good ball movement here for yes. the Mavericks. Very good ball movement, and it pays off. Open three for Caleb Davis, and he makes it. We're tied at five. Yeah, they did a really good job moving the ball around, found the open guy. Caleb had an easy three-point shot. Claren shot doesn't fall. Davis gets the rebound. Mavericks really trying to get the ball inside to their big guys, Odell and Ardry. Haven't had a lot of success inside, but the ball movement has paid off for some open shots. And we're gonna have a blocking foul on Odell's drive. And that is going to be called on Esplund. His first team's first. And number 24, Corbin Vandenhoek coming in the game for the Mavericks. He replaces Ardry. Uh, Easy steal on the player. inbounds. And Yost gets the layup. Uh, see, also in the game right now for Mineola is number three, Joey Harrington. Seems like the Mavericks are really trying to force it in a little two side a little bit too hard on uh, that inbounds play. Fairly easy for the Wildcats to pick it out before the pass is thrown. Both teams playing fairly aggressive man defense. And Minnesota so far doing a fairly good job of denying the inside game to, to the two big seniors for Kiowa County, Odell and Artery. Mavericks being very patient here though, not forcing it. And ball is out of bounds, last tipped by Mineola. The Kiowa County ball in the inbounds. Davis open from the corner, and he makes it. Again, the Mavericks leading scorer has a touch here early tonight. That's the second three. Mavericks lead 8-7. Yeah, they really caught the Wildcats sleeping on that play. Uh, Caleb yeah. was pretty much camped out there at the baseline. Davis getting it done on both sides of the court with the steal there. And Watson makes the two there, and Mavericks open up a three-point lead here with just over two and a half minutes left to play in the first quarter. And Vandenhoek with a rebound off of Yost's shot, and he is fouled. So Mavericks getting a little momentum here. Yeah, their, their shots are really starting to fall. It'd be good to see if uh, Caleb can really heat up tonight. Have a couple substitutions. Looks like uh, Artery is coming back in the game, giving Odell a breather. Also in the game for the Mavericks, uh, number three, Trevor Powell. We're going to have a quick timeout here, and so we'll have a few messages from our sponsors and join you for the last couple minutes here of the first quarter. Is it time to find a new vehicle and you aren't quite sure where to start? Dwayne Shank Motors on Highway 54 in Greensburg not only sells new Chevrolets, but late quality used cars in most makes and models. Trade in your vehicle and drive away with knowing that the Shank family has been serving the surrounding area since 1973. If it is time to get that service you've been needing, with professional certified mechanics, you are sure to get that quality care your vehicle deserves. Start shopping for your next vehicle today at Dwayne Shank Motors on Highway 54 in Greensburg. And welcome back uh, after that quick timeout. Uh, again, Kiowa County has gone on a pretty quick run here. Uh, 
Five unanswered points. They were down 5-7. Now they're up 10-7. Michael Bame in the game now for the Mavericks, as is Trevor Powell. It's like the Wildcats tried to put a weak man press there. Yeah, it looks like the Wildcats have oh, shifted good. to a 2-3 zone here. Yep. Let's see if that helps them contain the, well, the Maverick momentum. And Maverick's being very patient with the ball movement. Wildcats being very effective at denying inside lanes for passes. Bain with the drive, he's going to take an outside shot from the key. No good, but Vandenhoek with the rebound and the putback. Yeah, the thing about his own is, you know, that you have to be very, very cognizant of where you block out. And yeah, they he, lost sight of Vandenhoek, and he was in excellent position to get that rebound. Yeah, you don't just have the one guy you're key to uh, sign to block out. And Stewart there on the inside, uh, not able to force that shot in, and the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Maniola. Uh, they will stay with a full court pressure here, though. We'll see if the Mavericks are able to break it just like they did last time. Staying in there, true three. Powell's going to take a three. No good. Rebound goes to Shoemate, and Mineola will set up their offense. Yost gets it in to Stewart. Stewart shot no good. Mineola having difficulty buying a basket. They're having trouble shooting. And on Bames drive, he is uh, blocked. That is a foul on the shot, they're going to say. It looks like he's going to get two free throws. Good heads up play by Bame watching, uh, watching them lose attention to him and try to take it on the drive. Yeah, foul is on Yost. That's his first uh, third team foul. Not a lot of fouls here in the first quarter. Only 46 seconds left to play and only five fouls total between the two teams. It has been a very clean game. Very clean. Bame sinks the first free throw. And Perez is going to come in and give Davis a quick breather. Drive by McLaren's no good. Mavericks will have about 30 seconds to set up their offense and maybe get the last shot here in the first quarter. And nice ball movement again. Perez finds Arbery down low. Two more points for the Mavericks. They lead 15-7. And they may close the first quarter on a 10-0 run depending on what Manila does here in the last seconds. And that's going to be a foul on the floor. Fouls on Perez. That'll be his second. And he will be replaced by number 12, Trevor Tyree. Coach Perez is doing a really good job using, utilizing his whole bench and keeping all of his guys fresh. Currently only one starter on the floor for the Mavericks right now. And they're 21. Tyler Yost will, will end the first quarter on a high note, but really, uh, Kiowa County ended the first quarter on a 10 to two run, so a lot of momentum for the Mavericks. Uh, see if they can maintain it in the second quarter. We'll join you for it after these words from our sponsors. I'm Daniel Wallach, uh, founder and director of Greensburg Greentown. Greensburg Greentown is a nonprofit organization that is set up to help promote and provide information on the Green Initiative in Greensburg. The central project that we have going is our chain of eco-homes. The chain of eco-homes is a concept where these are real homes, but they're open to the public for folks to come visit and experience what green living is like. We have a bed and breakfast on site where people can spend the night. We have day tours so you can come and see all there is to green living in a home. We have all the elements of the Green Initiative in Greensburg. We have videos, we have posters and brochures, and we give tours. We have the Green Visitor Center in Greensburg. We invite people to come out and see all there is to see, and we can help make the day more fruitful and enjoyable. 
And welcome back. Kiowa County leads here as we start the second quarter, 15 to nine. Again, they ended the first quarter on a pretty good run, a 10-2 run. Although Mineola does get the ball here, uh, possession arrow in their favor as we start the second. Mavericks start the second quarter in a tough man-to-man -to -man defense. Watson with the steal. Not able to save it before it goes out of bounds, however. Still, nice defensive play by Watson. Really good hustle by Watson. He, he did an excellent job trying to keep that ball in bounds. You gotta give the kid the effort. Steal by Bame. So again, aggressive D by the Mavericks paying off here early in the second quarter. Mavericks are doing an excellent job getting in the passing lanes and cutting off easy passes for the Wildcats. Bain gets the ball into Odell, doesn't take a shot. Another pass into Artery, another pass to Odell. Great ball movement. Unfortunately, Odell not able to get the, the shots to drop, but still gotta love the ball movement for the Mavericks. And Rio Davis with a steal. He's gonna take it in for a layup. So again, great defense here starting out the second half, second quarter for the Mavericks. McLaren with the shot that's partially blocked. Artery comes down with the rebound and Davis brings it up the floor. Bain's gonna take a three. No good. Rebound goes to Shoemate. And Odell with another steal on the defensive end. Hell yeah. Very Mavericks have really stepped up the defense, Matt. Really stepped it up. Really doing a good job of denying any passing lanes whatsoever and picking off quite a few would-be passes. Odell gets that one to drop after a nice feed. Mavericks now up 10-19-9, so they, many Ola coach probably with good reason wants to take a time out here and talk about things. Then Mavericks with a lot of uh, momentum. We'll take a quick break and join. please join us as we resume the second quarter. Yeah, 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 that worked great. And welcome back. The Kiowa County Mavericks uh, have a little momentum here in the late first quarter, early second. They're up by 10 points, 19-9 over the Mineola Wildcats. Uh, Wildcat coach wanted to uh, call a timeout and discuss things as they're starting to lose control of this game. Shoemate passes into Esplin. Shoemate to Esplin again. This time Esplin kicks it back out to, that's Britt. Nice pass into e Stewart. And he is fouled on the shot. He'll get two free throws. Yeah, Artery uh, got into his body a little bit there on that. He went pretty straight up with the arms, but still made contact. And Stewart will be shooting the free throws for Mineola. Stewart averaging about 10 points a game. And a 44% free throw shooter on the year. We'll see if the averages play out. And he missed the first, we'll see if he makes the second. He does not, and again, the Wildcats struggle, struggle shooting the ball continue. Watson's nice. able to save a turnover there. And Mavericks will set up their offense up by 10. Manila's back in a man to man. A little more aggressive D than they were showing in the first quarter. See if they can't force the Mavericks to turn the ball over a couple times. Mavericks being patient, not forcing the ball inside. Davis gonna take a three, and he's gonna make it. That is Davis's third three. 
And that is a total of 11 for Davis on the night. So again, still halfway through the second quarter, he's already at 11 points, having a very good game. And again, with another steal there, I think that's Davis's third steal on the night. So he's just having a good game on both ends of the court. Really good press defense on that. And oh, nice wow. move by Odell on the other end. Easy bucket. Mavericks up 24-9. Good and hustle. Vandenhoek able to uh, get a near steal there. Uh, knocks the ball out of bounds. Many old will retain possession. Britt there with a the bucket. Try to cut down Kiowa County's momentum. There's a turnover. And Britt again on the other end. He's going to get a chance for a three-point play. So Britt single-handedly kind of cutting into the Maverick momentum here. Has four straight points for the Wildcats. See if we can make it five. A Brit, a 45% free throw shooter on the year. Averaging just over three points a game. So that is Brit's fifth point of the game. He's already more than uh, matched his game average. Doing a good job off the bench for the Wildcats here in the first half. Again, good ball movement by the Mavericks. Got to think Coach Press has got to be very happy with the way they're passing the ball here early in the game. Absolutely, Matt. Absolutely. Good crisp passes. There have been a few ill-advised ones trying to force the ball in down low early, but I think they have... Uh... And Vandenhoek gets tangled up with Stewart there. And I'm not sure what they're saying, the basket. Apparently they're saying there was a, a made basket there. I'm not sure what the reasoning is behind that, but I'm sure the officials know the rule book. So two points for Mineola. It's gonna be a travel on Yost going the other way. Still, Maniola has been able to uh, cut into this lead. Instead of down 15, they're now still down only 10. It looks like they're going to go with a full court press here. And Kyle County able to break it. Nice pass into Vandenhoek. And again, outstanding ball movement by the Mavericks. And they're rewarded in more points. Dangerous pass trying to find Shoemate. He turns into a turnover and a bucket on the other end for Watson. And Maniola just right back the other way. Very up to untipo game. And Mavericks are going to run right back the other way. And that's going to be out of bounds off of Watson. Bit. Tell you, breakneck pace here the last two or three possessions, just run and gun each way. As it sits, three minutes left to play in the first half. Mavericks leading by 14. And they're going to call a foul on the shot. Fouls on Vandenhoek, and Shoemate will be shooting the free throws. And that is Vandenhoek's second foul, and Mineola is now in the bonus. As Shoemate not able to get the roll. Shoemate only a 37% free throw shooter on the year. Free throws are really hurting uh, Mineola right now. Well, as we mentioned in our pregame, uh, that has been a struggle for them this season. So there's good news and bad news for Mineola. Uh, they don't have any one player who's particularly bad at free throws, but they don't have anyone who's really excelling either. Most of the team sits somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% from the line. Which again, the coaches usually have something they like to see a little bit north of 50%. And a turnover by the Mavericks. 
And Shoemate's gonna get an easy bucket on the other end. Now they switch to a 3-2 zone. Shoemate is leading the way for Wildcat scorers currently with six points. Burt right behind at five as far as the Mavericks go. Uh, Davis, as you can see, doing most of the damage. That's his 4-3. He now has 14 points. Uh, Odell is back with eight. I was to come up with second on that particular stack. Davis is going to reset the offense from the point again. As Travis observed, Maniola back into a 3-2 zone. Davis with a longer three, not able to knock that one down. So that's his first three-point miss of the night. Still four for five, not bad. On the other end, again, Maniola pushing the ball, buys an easy backup for Shoemate. Mavericks are really starting to slow on this fast-paced deal. They, they uh, were real sluggish getting back on defense. Oh, last possession. Again, uh, Mineola, very athletic team, playing a very fast-paced game. Another near break there for him, but Britt uh, not able to come up for the full steal, just to tip out of bounds. And with a minute and a half to play in the first half, Bame will set up the offense for the Mavericks. These fast-paced games are kind of hard to call. Two plays have happened by the time you describe the first. I'm still in the first quarter. <laughs> well, Bame's doing us a favor here and slowing the pace down a little bit. Bame fakes a shot. Gets a drive, not able to sink the shot, however. And on the other end, he fouls trying to come up with the rebound. And that'll be a one and one for the Wildcats. And fouls on Bain, that's his first. Team eighth, so Shoemate will get a one and one. Makes the first with a nice roll. Shoemate leading the Wildcats. That is his ninth point. Let's see if he can make it 10 by converting the 1-1. Nice touch on the roll again. So 10 points for Shoemate, and 10 points is the difference in this game. Cobb County leads 33-23. Shoots Watts in there, trying to find the guy in the corner. So many will have 16 seconds here to try and get this lead down to single digits. Mavericks are really getting sloppy with their passes. Um, well, they were very patient there for a while. Just uh, Powell tried to do a little too much there, maybe, by finding Watson in the corner. And nice block there by Odell. As Good job of getting all ball. Very forceful in rejecting that shot by Stewart. So three seconds left to play. Shoemate's going to take a final three, and he is fouled on the shot. He'll get three free throws throws the final plays of the first half. Fouls called on Watson. So he'll have three chances to cut this to a single-digit lead. And Shoemate, a 37% free throw shooter on the year. Although doing very well tonight. That's his third make. And fourth. So Maverick Lee going into the second half will be eight. Uh, not a bad position to be in, but 
Mineola, again, very athletic team, very dangerous team. So we'll see what happens in the second half. Hope you join us. Welcome back, and as part of a regular feature we have here during halftime of our boys' games, I'm joined by Patrick Clement, the editor of our local Kiowa County Signal newspaper, and he brings up to speed on current events that are going along around here in Greensburg and Kiowa County. Patrick, what's going on? Matt, thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Um, well, one of the biggest stories of the week is Greensburg has lost uh, Marvin George, who has been the pastor of the Baptist Church for about 12 years here, and he uh, he's moving on to... Uh, for, to um, Eastern side of the state, Fort Scott, and uh, and uh, he, you know he's one of those guys that um, you know he was he spent some time here before the tornado, and he spent a lot of time here following the tornado, and and um, uh, we did have a reporter uh, at the church um, earlier in the week, and what was fascinating, Matt, is um, hearing Marvin talk a little bit about what the spiritual needs of the community has changed since when he came to the, to, to Greensburg, and and uh, immediately following the tornado. So, so that was a really fascinating insight in, into, into the community. Yeah, Pastor George, a very prominent member of the community here for over a decade, so very sad to see him go. Do they have a replacement lined up? You know, I haven't heard who's going to replace him. I do know when he came that they had some people sort of filling in. Um, you know, I mean, any way you slice it, the community is at a big loss to lose Marvin. He's he does announcing at the football games. His his son is a big part of the community here. He's been managing the Greensburg Rec Department, and so um, you know, I, no matter who comes in and replaces him, they got some pretty big shoes to fill. All right. Well, thanks for those uh, current event update. Again, sad to see part, uh, Pastor Marvin George leave, but I'm sure the get a great guy in to replace him. So again, thanks, Patrick. And we were just seconds away from the second half, so please come back here very quickly. Co-op in Greensburg is proud to offer Bayer Crop Science crop protection products. Chewing bugs, fungal diseases, and grasses needlessly kill or drastically limit corn and soybean production each year. Innovative Bayer Crop Science products control these unwanted intruders. That means increased yields for more grain in the bin at harvest. Let Southern Plains Co-op protect your crops with Bayer Crop Science products. At Southern Plains, we deliver service. And welcome back as we start the second half. Start with a miss by Odal. Mavericks lead 33-25. Uh, kind of a up and down first half as Britt takes a three and he makes it. Maverick lead down to five. And that is down from a high of 15 point lead they enjoyed in the second quarter. Really good start for the Wildcats here, coming out with that three-pointer. And Odo on the end with two points. And Britt with that three, he has been coming up very big off the bench for the Wildcats. He averages, his average is just over three points a game as Stewart gets an easy bucket. But uh, so far, Britt already with eight points here. And Kyle County's gonna turn the ball over on the inbounds. So, Again, a lot of good momentum from the first half of the Mavericks, and the lead is very close to evaporating here, down to five, with Wildcats getting possession underneath their own basket. Shoemate shot, rebound by Stewart. Yeah, they've definitely come out on fire here. The Wildcats are definitely. And that is going to look to be a foul, or not a foul. Not sure what that call was, but Mavericks will get the ball under the basket. And officials gonna have to discuss some things. And they're going to allow Perez to move freely on the baseline, because that was off of a made shot. Mavericks Whoa. beat the press and set up their offense. Odal's shot does not fall. 
Again, Wildcats now only down three after having been down by as many as 15 in the first half. Shoemade's shot does not drop. Odell with the rebound. Mavericks have switched to a zone defense here. Steal air by Shoemate, and he's going to have an easy layup on the other end. Maverick lead down one, down to one, and Perez is going to co coach Perez taking the team out. They're going to have to talk about it. Now just a one-point game. We'll please join us for what's turning out to be a great game. Media Center supports your personal, nonprofit, or business needs through video. Organizations use video to raise interest and increase fundraising. Video projects build new skills and create professional appeal. Friends can share music, tell stories, and say hello from miles away. We make videos and more, and we can teach you how to make your videos. Call 620-723-1117 or find us on the web at kwksmedia.org. The Media Center in Greensburg, Kansas is innovating community videos journalists. Welcome back from that timeout. Uh, Kiowa County needing a timeout to talk over things. Their lead is down to one point, 35-34. Again, they were up by as many as 15 in the second quarter. Full court press causing them problems here early in the third. It's a full, full court man-to-man -man is what Mineola is in. Kiowa County able to break at that time. Odell going to take a three, does not drop, and comes up the rebound on the other end with a jump ball called, and that's going to go Kiowa County's way. I'm sorry, I'm corrected on that. That is possession and arrow in favor of Mineola. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they started the first, second half with possession, and I don't believe a jump ball has been called since, but... Actually, Matt, the Mavericks did start the second half with the ball. Uh, apparently, my memory is very poor, so thanks for that correction. <laughs> Dame and Powell coming in will give Watson and Perez a rest. Miola has the ball. Underneath their own basket, down only one point. Good inbound play, getting the ball into McLaren. Fouled on the shot, two free throws. The foul is on Odell, his first, first team foul of the second half. McLaren rattles the first shot home. McLaren a 50% free throw shooter on the season. Makes them both here, however, and Mineola with her first lead since the very first seconds of the first half. So Mineola is showing very good poise and resilience after being down big in the second quarter. Come back to lead here very early in the third. Nice fadeaway by Odell. Gives the Mavericks a one-point lead. And on the other end, Yost is fouled. Mineola Clark crowd getting into this game. And that was a pass uh, when Yost was fouled, so no free throws. Yeah, Odell uh, really needs to set up his feet when he's defending like that. Brits three, no good. Odell with the rebound. And Davis will set up the offense. It's the ball underneath the artery. Artery shot, no good. Now, artery been very quiet here tonight for the Mavericks, averaging usually close to 12 points a game. Only three so far here tonight. And McLaren's three-pointer no good. Rebound to Odell. Mm 
Mineola back into a man-to-man D. Finds Arbery down low. Shot blocked. Second one, he is fouled. And looks like they're going to say that was a foul on the ground. Yeah, no free throws there. Foul's on McLaren. And foul was on the ground, so no free throws for Rartery. Not sure what the call was there. Uh, foul on Artery, I believe. Yep, that is Hardery's third, team third. In Mavericks lead 37-36. Bain with the steal. And he is fouled on the layup. Two points plus a free throw attempt. Nice job by Bain. So Bain will try to extend the Kiowa County lead back out to four. Fouls on McLaren. That's his first second team foul of the second half for the Wildcats. No good. Odal with the rebound. And after a brief scrum, Kiowa County comes up with it. And you're going to turn it over, trying to get the ball into Odell. That was Davis's pass, which was broken up. And Odell is going to be fouled by Shoemate over the back. It's uh, really starting to get somewhat out of control, Matt. Definitely a lot of passion on both sides. You can tell just before Artery was taken out of the game with three fouls, he was getting a little frustrated. Uh, Again, very physical game on both sides, and just Artery has not been having uh, the most involvement in the game. Again, he's used to leading the Mavericks in scoring, at least down low, but he's having trouble getting involved in the game tonight. Shoemate with a three, no good. Rebound to Mineola. And they're going to call a foul on Odal there and a brief bump. And <laughs> referees are going to do their best to try and uh, stop that before anything really starts. And Odal there with a block attempt gets a little body and have a few words for Britt there at the end. And Britt's going to get two shots. What? Uh, or he's not going to get two shots. Apparently, they're calling no shot there. Britt with a three attempt. No good. Odal with a rebound on the other end. Powell finds Bain for a three. No good. Oh! Powell drives back in. Not able to convert the layup. Kiowa County fans wanted a foul there. None called. And officials letting quite a bit uh, play here. Again, pretty physical game, but not too many whistles. I, I'm somewhat mystified. As long as they're consistent on both ends, that's just a different way to play. Maniola back to a 3-2 zone. Odell's found down low. Turnaround's no good. Stewart with the rebound. And that's going to be a foul call. Another foul. Looks like that's going to be on Odal. What? Nope, sorry. That is on Davis. His first. So that, yep, Davis is first. Fifth team foul now for the Mavericks. And we're going to have a quick timeout. Hope you'll join us for what's turning out to be a very, very exciting game. Mid-America Ag Network, your partner in agriculture. 
on your radio, on your computer, on your phone. The trusted source for market information and ag news since 1977. When you need to know, we are here. Mid-America Ag Network. Most reliable. Most trusted. Most respected. MidAmericaAgNetwork.com. And welcome back. We'd like to remind you one of our sponsors tonight here is Greensburg State Bank, a good bank in a good town. Visit them at bestbank.us. Go Mavericks. I think I know those people. You just might. I it think is I'm, a good bank. It is a good bank, and this is a good town. So truth in advertising, refreshingly. Again, we have a 39-36 game in favor of the Mavericks. Lead is currently three, uh, although Maniolo did actually come back to take a one-point lead before, you know, being down by as many as 15 in the second quarter. So, uh, again, very close, very physical game. Uh, and you can tell temper tempers are starting to flare a bit on both sides. So officials are trying to uh, stay ahead of that. Hopefully they do. And we'll have a nice, clean game here to finish out. I'd really like to see the Mavericks get back to their, their good ball movement. They've, they've kind of shied away from that a little bit, trying to really push the issue. Um, and it's really kind of come back to bite them. Yeah, part of it as well is just it's been a very up-tempo game here in the second half. A lot of turnovers, a lot of fast breaks both ways. Stewart there with the rebound. And Mavericks lead back down to one. Bame going to take a quick three. No good. Rebound to Vandenhoek, his shot's no good. And Odell almost with the rebound, but tips it out of bounds, so ball goes back to Mineola. Now, Ardery and Watson back in the game for Kiowa County. Bame and Odell will come out. Mineola with possession, down one, 143 left to play. Kiowa County back in a man to man. Seem to be going demand to man primarily. Uh, they do switch to zones on inbounds plays, and I think is the, the pattern I've been noticing here in the second half at least. And nice move by Stewart. Two points and gets Minio the lead. And Stewart now up to 10. And Coach Perez takes a quick timeout, a 10 second violation in threat there. So we will come back after these words from our sponsors. Let Southern Plains Co-op take the worry out of choosing corn and soybean seed. For powerful performance at harvest, we know mycogen seeds deliver. Global breeding and vigorous testing results in hybrid seeds with guts. That's true value that makes a difference. Maximize your seed investment for higher yields at harvest. Choose mycogen hybrids from Southern Plains Co-op in Greensburg. At Southern Plains, we deliver service and mycogen seeds. Welcome back. We'd like to remind you that our next game, uh, live coverage, will be against Kinsley. Uh, that's going to be next week, a week from today, January 11th at 6.30. So please join us for that game against the Kiowa County... What's Kiowa, or sorry, the Kinsley Coyotes. Kinsley Coyotes. Yeah. Sorry, I've got Kiowa County on the brain. Coyote. The visiting team changes every week, but uh, Kiowa County tends to stay the same on these, so apologies if I do a slip of the tongue there every once in a while. And Mavericks down one. Powell with a shot from the key, no good. Rebound to Stewart. And many all the other way. Mavericks have really went cold from the field. Again, they had a very hot second quarter, but again, they are having struggles here in the second half in what was a 15-point lead down to a one-point deficit at the current moment. And Shoemate's going to be called for a travel there on the corner. So Kiowa County get the ball back with just over 20 seconds left to play. Pretty costly turnover there. 21 seconds to end out the third quarter. Mineola staying with the pressure on full court. 
Then McLaren's gonna foul Davis there on the inbounds. McLaren second, team fourth. Really, for as physical as it's been, you know, the foul count, it really isn't as high as you'd expect. Again, uh, the officials have been calling a fairly relaxed game as far as the fouls are concerned. Uh, maybe part of the reason why tempers are starting to flare on both sides because a lot of physical contact but no whistle can frustrate players. Powell with the drive. Five seconds. Finds Davis for a three, no good, and that's how we'll end the third quarter. Mavericks down one, 39-40. Great game here. We'll see how the final eight minutes goes. Hope you join us for them. Kansas' largest indoor farm and ranch show is the Garden City Farm and Ranch Show, January 24th through the 26th, 2013. This fifth annual event features Ag Outlook 2013, the Dairy Summit, farm equipment demos, and alternative energy products, groundwater management, and irrigation solutions. Interviews and speaker presentations will be included in the live worldwide broadcast. You'll see why the Garden City Farm and Ranch Show is widely known as one of the most elite farm shows in the industry. The fifth annual Garden City Farm and Ranch Show, Thursday, January 24th through Saturday, January 26th, 2013. Details at midamericaagnetwork.com. Free admission and free lunch each day. Doors open at 9 a.m. daily. Live streaming a service of kwksmedia.org and presented by midamericaagnetwork.com. Keeping in mind, you can connect with us on Facebook. Uh, the Like the Media Center on Facebook to get connected and learn ways that you could get involved with what we do. You know, the thing about the Media Center, Matt, is it's a very, very good opportunity for our students to learn how a TV production like this works. And I, yeah, um, a lot of educational opportunity, but also it's just a lot of fun. I don't know about you, but I have a blast doing this. So You're if you want to steal paid? my job and uh, probably do a much better job than I'll do, please see Grant. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not, since you know, I'd be out of a job that I enjoy. Yeah, what would you do on a Friday night if you didn't do basketball games? I don't know. I have to give that a long think. And Odell found down low, and Mavericks now with a one-point lead. But again, fast paced by the Wildcats. And they're going to say Britt was shooting there. He'll get two free throws. And that is a Just foul a on Odell. Step behind, getting his hand on the ball. That's the fourth foul on Odell as well. So, yep. Could be fairly costly coming down the, down the stretch here. And as we mentioned, Odell, one of the very big key players for the Mavericks, and he's going to have to take, sit out for a few minutes here uh, with a tie game currently. Though not for long, as Joe sinks them both, Mineola back up by one. Mineola still in their 3 2 zone. Pass it out. Rebound by Vandenhoek. Put back, no good. Mineola will try to grow their lead. Shoemate with a three, no good. And it's going to be a kick on Davis, so dead ball beneath basket. And as we kind of predicted early in this game, uh, Mineola having a lot of struggles from uh, shots deep. Another one does not yet fall for him there. And they're doing most of their damage on fast breaks and shots inside. Uh, although we did also say they weren't the best free throw shooting team, but they've been doing their best to prove us wrong there. Uh, they have been doing fairly well from the line tonight. A lot better than their season average would lead you to believe, for sure, Matt. Again, coming into this game, they had been missing more often than they'd been making free throws, uh, but definitely making more free throws than missing tonight. And get a turnover there on the alley-oop attempt. Artery was in position, but the pass was just a little short. What are you watching? 
And Artery's fouled down low. Uh, it's going to be a foul on the ground, no shots. Perez back in the game for Kiowa County. He's going to give Powell a breather. Foul's on Stewart. That's only his second foul, 15 foul. Davis from the corner, a three. That's his fifth three of the night. 17 points for Davis to lead all scorers. Really big shot by Davis at a time that Mavericks really needed it. Steal or turnover here for the Mavericks would really, really go a long way to change the change the direction of this game. Yost gonna take a three and he's gonna make it. And again, that is a momentum killer for the Mavericks as Mayola retakes a one-point lead. Davis gonna try to answer with a three of his own, falls short. Tries to get his own rebound, and Mineola's got a three on one the other way. And that is a nice block by Vandenhoek. Goes out of bounds, Mineola ball. Good hustle on Vandenhoek's part to get back in time to make that block. Again, that's where Mineola's done a lot of their damage tonight is on those fast breaks. At least here in the second half, the, the Mavericks did a really good job shutting them down in the first half on their breaks. Uh, Just wonder if the uh, pace of the game's kind of catching up with the Mavericks here late. It's been very quick for a long time and they may be getting tired. Although as you observe, Coach Perez has been doing a pretty good job of subbing players in and keeping guys fresh. Britt shot no good. Watson with the rebound. About five minutes to play, Mavericks down one. Ardry finds Vinan hook down low. Rebound gets out. Britt ends up with it. And they're going to call a blocking foul there. Britt's going to get a couple free throws. Fouls on Watson. That's his third. And Odell is coming back into the game for the Mavericks. He's going to have to be careful with four fouls and still 446 left to play. Britt misses the first. Britt does replace Vanden Hook. Or sorry, not Britt. Odo replaces Vanden Hook. Britt shooting free throws. <laughs> Britt makes the second. Odo oh, needs to definitely be careful here with four fouls. It'd be really, really difficult for the Mavericks to be able to replace his presence down, down low on a permanent basis. Fadeaway jumper no good for Odo. Britt the other way. No good on the layup. As Perez tried to take a charge there, but referee called no foul whatsoever. Well, at least he called it even both ways. Yeah. Of course, it did work out to the Mavericks' advantage, seeing how he missed the shot. And Perez. Passed into heavy traffic there, trying to find Artery. Works out to be a foul on the Wildcats on the play. That is the sixth team foul for Mineola. Foul is on Britt. It's his first. Rebound it's tipped. Davis ends up with it. And that's going to be an over the back on Perez. And Mineola's on the one and one. So Kiowa County's going to really have to watch the fouls here in the last few minutes. Uh, Mineola's in the bonus, and again, with the lead, they have been shooting free throws well tonight, and uh, any foul would be in danger of just expanding their current lead. Yost missed the first, so no points there.
Davis directing the offense. Again, very aggressive man-to-man -man D for the Wildcats. And Perez is going to reset. Mavericks, on, again, aren't moving the ball as well. Right. As they Good ball movement, be. but Odell not able to handle the pass. And that could be costly. Uh, looked like he was in a good position to uh, sink that basket and tie the game up. Instead, they're still down two with Mineola getting possession of the ball. Davis with a good steal. And he is pushed from behind on the fast break attempt. Foul on the floor, and that should be a one-on-one -on -one for Davis. Davis, a very good free throw shooter, shooting 84% so far on the season. Again, leading all scores with 17. Not able to make the first, unfortunately, for the Mavericks, but Artery comes down with a rebound. Left it and Odell thought about a three, didn't take it. And Perez is fouled on the floor. He'll get uh, one and one. So one and one from Perez, who has been struggling from the line mightily this year. He's shooting only 25%. Well, Caleb was shooting very well and missed, so maybe Perez will make. Unfortunately, with Mavericks, that's not the case. And fast break on the other end. Yost does not take a shot, kicks it back out to Shoemaker. It's not Shoemaker, Shoemate. Sorry, I was thinking of Comets, apparently. <laughs> Officials are talking it over. Foul on Artery. Uh, that is the call, and that is Artery's fourth. So Mavericks really have to be careful. Both their uh, very important big guys, Artery and Odell, have four fouls and still have three minutes left to play. Again, inside is where Mineola is most dangerous. Stewart not able to convert the first part of the one and one. So Mavericks still only down two with 2.47 to play. Mineola again in a very aggressive man-to-man. -man. And the ball will be kicked out of bounds by McLaren. Cabo County retains possession. I'd like to see the Mavericks try to get Caleb open for a three. And he is, Davis uh, with those threes has accounted for 15 of the Mavericks' 44 points. Uh, Odell not able to convert down low. Really, aside from Davis and Odell, most of the other Mavericks having a lot of struggles on the offensive end. As Mineola stretches to the lead to four. As between Davis and Odell, they can, they account for 31 of the 44 Maverick points tonight. Ardry able to convert there. And Coach Perez is going to take a timeout. That's a 30-second timeout, so we'll just take a brief break and hope you join us for the last minute 45. Welcome back here. We have a minute 45 to play. Mavericks down 46-48 in what's turning out to be a very good, very close game uh, after it looked early like Mavericks were in control. Yeah, Matt, they were in control in the first half. This half, they've 
not pass the ball as effectively as they did in the first half. And as a result, they're down by a bucket. You can also tell that the, the Mavericks, especially the Mavericks, but even some of the, uh, the Wildcat players are getting frustrated at times. The, the officials are allowing a very physical game to be played, a lot of contact with no calls, no whistles. So, uh, again, been very entertaining so far, and we're sure the last couple of minutes will be as well. But as we stand, minute 45 to play, Miniola up to, and they will have the ball. It's like the Mavericks are gonna go with a little full court pressure. It's gonna be man to man, and Miniola won't have too many problems breaking it, however. Stewart down low finds McLaren. Turnarounder doesn't fall, and again, no call there. As has been the tradition in this game, contact, but no, no whistle. Again, getting down to a minute left to play. Mavericks are going to try to be patient, get a good shot, and tie this game. Artery tries to find Odell, but that's one pass too many. Gets away, and that's a turnover. And Mineola will have the ball here with 49 seconds to play. See if Kiowa County opts to foul here in any very soon. And we're going to call a timeout here. That's going to be a Mineola timeout. I believe. Sorry, the official is still discussing. Sorry for the dead air, but the officials are having a discussion with the Mineola coach. I believe a timeout was called there. At least the, that looks like the whistle, what the whistle was. And we are taking a timeout, so hope you join us here for the last 37 seconds. Welcome back to the last few seconds of this game. We'd like to take a time right now to thank the, our event crew, all the camera operators, the guys in the truck. Again, they do a great job. I'd like to give a, just a, a big thanks to everyone who volunteers at the Media Center. Uh, do a great job. And again, uh, it's good education, a lot of fun. So if you're interested, please give Grant a call, 723-1117, and become a member of our event crew. Yeah, the crew makes me look good, so. Uh, or sound good, for that matter. They're, they're not a miracle worker, so I can't say the same for myself. They're good, but they're not miracle workers. Again, Mineola with 33 seconds left to play. Going to try to run out the clock, or they're going to take a quick, easy shot. That is McLaren down low. And that is a foul called. And it looks like that's on Odell. Or sorry, no, uh, Watson. That's Watson. That was somewhat of a phantom call. I, I've been very mystified by that that particular referee. He, uh, yeah. Well, again, it looked uh, to me like there was contact, but it was after the shot. And uh, previously, that's definitely the type of call they had let slide. Uh, not um, in that particular instance, however. So, miss of the free throws, remains a four point game. Kiowa County is going to need a couple quick scores here, see if they're able to convert. Shoot! Davis with a long three, no good. Powell with the rebound. Davis with another three, he makes that one. So 10 seconds left to play. Maverick's gonna have to have a conversion on D. They'll take a timeout, discuss how they wanna do it. Please join us for the fighting, exciting final seconds. For Bayer Crop Science crop protection products. Chewing bugs, fungal diseases, 
and grasses needlessly kill or drastically limit corn and soybean production each year. Innovative Bayer crop science products control these unwanted intruders. That means increased yields for more grain in the bin at harvest. Let Southern Plains Co-op protect your crops with Bayer crop science products. At Southern Plains, we deliver service. And just a quick reminder, please join us here next week as we do have live coverage of the Kiowa County versus Kindley Coyotes game. That'll be January the 11th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, I look forward to being here, Matt. How about yourself? Yep, a week from tonight. Uh, like the first two games we've called, very good games. Again, last, last week, uh, exciting victory over the Maxville Mustangs on a last-second layup, and looks like this one's coming right down to the wire as well. So they're exciting games, fun to call. You know, I'd really like to go back to the first half and investigate that, that phantom you know, bucket that was made to see if it actually did go in you know, on the continuation of the shot. Um, and Yost, not able to find anybody, takes a quick timeout. So we're going to stay here after this quick timeout. Uh, and just again, bring you up to, up to date on a few stats. Uh, Scoring-wise for the Mavericks, uh, leading the way definitely is Caleb Davis. He's got 20 points. And 18 of those uh, are actually coming on three-point buckets. So he's got six threes tonight uh, to lead all scorers with 20. Odell also scoring big for the Mavericks with 14. Uh, definitely making up the bulk of the scoring for the Mavericks. On the other side of the court, uh, Shoemate leads the way with 14. Britt having a very good game off the bench for the, for the Wildcats. He's got 11. And 21, uh, Yost uh, is down, is uh, in third place with nine. So Yost will be the one trying to inbounds the ball. Again, had to take a timeout, not able to find an open guy the first time. Again, 9.6 seconds left to play. Menil up one with the ball under the basket. Again, Yost able to find Shoemate there. He's fouled by Davis. And again, uh, Mavericks have more than 10 team fouls, so Shoemate's going to get two free throws. Good news for the Mavericks is uh, there's still 8.5 seconds left on the clock, so even if Shoemate sinks both of these, th both of these free throws, they should have enough time to at least get one three-point attempt on the other end to tie it. Shoemate does make the first. Odell and Artery back in for the Mavericks. Definitely going to help on the rebounding side and also uh, a couple of the Mavericks leading scorers as well, although, again, Mavericks may need a three on the other end depending on whether or not Shoemate makes this last three throw. Very pivotal shot here. And he does make a second, so the Mavericks are going to need a three, and they'll have eight and a half seconds to do it. Jump ball, possession arrow in favor of Mineola, and that may be the game with just two seconds left to play. Perez in the game for Odell. As again, Mavericks are going to have to either get a steal on the inbounds or a very quick foul. And Odell again, Odell Artery do not have fouls to give, so they're going to come out. And there will be no foul. This game will be over. Mayo wins 49-52. Again, very exciting game. Uh, Kyle County looked to be in control early, up 15. Uh, fortunately for the Mavericks, Vanille came in strong the end of the second quarter and also the third quarter. Uh, and they're going to end the game with a victory of margin of three points. So very good game. Uh, temper, tempers flare there for a little while. Very physical game, uh, but still very close to two teams that figure in to be the two of the top teams in their league this year. So uh, very good game. Any thoughts, Travis? None that I can speak to a immature audience. Uh, I'll let that slide. Uh, again, just do a, a quick recap of stats uh, for the Mavericks. They were led by Caleb Davis with 20 points. Again, 18 of those were coming on three-point buckets. So a very good shooting night for, uh, for Davis. Uh, Odell brings up uh, 
right behind Davis with 14 points uh, for the Mavericks. On the other end of the court again, they were red, led by Shoemate, uh, who ended up with 16. Uh, with those two uh, free throws at the end, really, again, made a big difference. Uh, and also Britt with 11 off the bench and Yost with nine. So, again, very good game. Uh, wish everyone from Mineola a safe travels back uh, westward as they go home tonight. And hope that all people tuning in tonight join us next week for our game against uh, the Kinsley Coyotes. And for now, we'll just leave you with a few highlights of the game and look forward to seeing you next time.